can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Glory be to your name, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Lord, because you are with us. You said when we come together to fellowship, in your name you are there. We acknowledge your presence tonight. Thanking you from the depth of our hearts for all that you are to us. Thank you again and again for the gift of life, the gift of the life of God. And not just that you gave us life, you brought us to the knowledge of the truth. We have gathered together tonight again, Lord, to let you know the reason. We live and move and have our being. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done and continue to do in us and with us and through us. We thank you, Lord, for your long suffering and your patience, your mercies, your kindness. As a matter of fact, the psalmist said that your loving kindness is better than life. And indeed, it is in better than life. What else shall we say to you? But from the depth of our heart, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the life that you gave. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of heaven. We honor you tonight, Holy Spirit of my Father. There is no strength, there is no wisdom, there is no ability of any sort except that the one that you give and you provide. We look up to you, we depend on you absolutely, not only to bring the word of God to us, but also to grant us understanding and also the grace that we may live in the very center of your will, that Jesus Christ and him alone will be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Good evening and God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the, to the presence of Jesus Christ. So today, um, I, I want to trust God to help me to bring out what is what is in my heart and um, see <clears throat> there are there are two kinds of living two kinds of living you may call it the two kinds of life or the two, or two kinds of living that's living your life there are two kinds. And if you're going to understand it, I want to do this. You that are seated down here listening to me and I that is speaking to you, man is made up of three parts. There are three parts that made up man. You have the physical body, you have the soul, then you have the spirit. The first one, which is a physical body, is the one that you see. 
the soul, you don't see it. The spirit, you don't see it with your eyes, but they exist. Now, with this body, with this physical body, you relate to this world, to the material world. You can see, you can touch, you can handle, you can taste. You can have a handshake with someone. You can smile to someone. That's with this physical body. You can go, you can walk about, you can, you know, you just do relate with this side of physical life that we can see. It is this body that does it. Now, there is another part, which is the soul. That soul is also called, there are two words that are used for the soul. It is called the flesh or the soul. Okay? Now, the soul is the one that you use to relate to the mental world. And what do I mean by mental world? Zeno, can you see your room, <coughs> your bedroom? Can you see it now? I don't mean with this your physical eyes. You know where your room is. You know where your bed is. You know where you keep your shoes. Can you see it now? With the eye of your spirit. That's what is called the mental wall. Okay? That's what you call the mental. Is that clear? That mental world, that is your soul. That is where your mind is. That's that mind now. That is what you used to know. Where your shoe, your house, your car. You just left your office. You remember how your office is. You remember the person that you just spoke to. You remember what you did today in the office, in your business places, and all of that. You remember the appointment you gave people and how, and all that. That is the mental world. It's the same world, but you don't, you don't relate with it physically. It's with this body that you relate with the physical world. And then with your mind, with your soul, you connect to the mental world. Then the spirit. With your spirit, you connect to the spiritual world, to the spirit world. That is, you connect to deities. Either with Satan or with God. That's why the Bible said that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. So it is through your spirit that you connect to God. Okay? Is that clear? First Thessalonians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 23. He said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, the body is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the body. I mean, the man is made up of the spirit, soul, and body. Now I've explained to you with the spirit, you connect with God, with your soul, you connect with the mental world, and then with your body, you connect to this physical world. Now, see, when we talk about being born again, out of these three parts of the body, out of these three parts, I want you to listen very carefully. But there is something that is going on that I have observed over time. Okay? As to the reason why, the, what I have observed over time is the reason why someone is born again, okay, is born again, is even filled with the Holy Ghost. He speaks in tongues. Now, <clears throat> one year later, two years later, three years later, four years later, after being born again, five years later, 10 years later, 
15 years later, 20 years later, and so on. You look at that person's life, he is still where he was. The life of the spirit is, you, is not evident at all. We still go ahead, live our life as if you can come to church, you climb the pulpit, you can, we can, you can preach, you can sing, you can worship, you can do all those, you can serve. But at the end of the day, there is no difference between you and the natural man. And that's why I want to take out time to it. So there is so much that is involved in all this. And so I found out that a lot of us are, people are not, we are not, we are not transiting to the spirit life. Some, some stay on this body, this physical body life level. That's where they stay. Some advance to the soul. And very few, very few go into the realm to connect with God in the spirit. Now, see, in the, in, in, so in your soul, the soul, the soul life, the soul life, you have the soul, you have the spirit. Now, these three aspects is only one that have been redeemed. The spirit, soul, and body is only one that have been redeemed. The one that has been redeemed and saved is the spirit man. The soul, the mind, the will, the emotions that make up the soul is still unsaved. It's not born again. This, your physical body, is still not changed. It's not affected. It's still the same. The same corruption is still there. That's why you can get sick. That's why you can get tired. Angels, they excel in spirit. They don't get tired. They don't get weak. That's why he still dies. That's why this body is not yet redeemed. He's still in that state. It was from the fall of Adam. Is that clear? Is that clear? I want you, if you are confused, you raise your hand. I give you the permission. You raise your hand and ask. Because there's a reason why I'm saying this. Now, when you come to the soul, the soul is still not yet saved. If you, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 50, 51, 52, where he tells us, he said, Behold, I tell you, I show you a mystery. Okay? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in a twinkle of, the, of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on a corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. When, so when it when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The corruption he's talking about is this body. This body is going to be changed, and we take up the very body of Jesus Christ. It will no longer be corrupted. That is to say, sin cannot affect it. Sickness cannot affect it. Disease cannot affect it. It cannot decay. It can't, it can't have wound. So, presently, this body is still not yet saved. Is that clear? Then you come to the soul. The soul is still not yet what? Saved. The soul, your soul is not born again. It is still the same soul you had before you met Christ and after you met Christ. 
is still all that you have learned, all the experiences, all the things you have ever known and all of that, and the one you have observed, the one you, all the places, all the impressions about life, about people, about things, about everything, they are still there in that soul. The good, the bad, and the ugly, they are all still there. The soul is not yet saved. The moral instructions that you learn, that you were taught, and all of that is in the soul. The good girl or the good boy that you have learned from your family and all of that, they are still there in your soul. He's not yet born again. He's not. James chapter 1, verse 21. We say, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the, graft, the engrafted word which is able to do what? The soul is not yet saved. Is not born again. Your soul. The only one that is born again is the spirit man. The Holy Spirit is living inside your spirit. The Holy Spirit does not live in your soul. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in your soul. It doesn't live in your mind. It doesn't live in your will. It doesn't live in your emotions and all of that. The soul is a different portion of your body. The Holy Spirit doesn't go there. It doesn't stay there. It doesn't live there. Because it's yet not saved. But you cannot separate the spirit from the soul. They are together. They are two sides of the same coin. It's only by the word of God, by God himself, by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that will be able to separate the soul from the spirit. So what it means is that wherever the soul goes, the spirit goes with it. Wherever the spirit goes, the soul goes with it. Give me Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of what? Soul and spirit. So you see the soul and the spirit. The only thing that can divide, separate the soul and the spirit is by the word of God or the spirit of God. So the soul is separate from the spirit life. So now you see, the spirit man is the one that is born again. He's the one that is recreated. When you hear the word, if any man is born again, he's a new creation. That new creation is your spirit man that is recreated. It is not um, a renovation. Your spirit was not renovated. Your spirit was not modified. Your spirit was regenerated by the Holy Spirit. So what it means is that your old spirit you had before you met Christ was taken away and then a new spirit was put inside of you. So And then he gives you the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. So God gives you a new heart and gives you a new spirit and then put his spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, comes and lives inside your spirit. So when you hear that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, it means that the Holy Spirit is living in your spirit. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, part two. A lot of people, those who are born again, you can be born again, you can have your spirit man regenerated. Okay? But then, what you are expected to do with this three part of your body, what God expects you to do with this three part of your body, the physical body, the soul, and your spirit, what did he say you should do to this your physical body? He says, offer this your body as a living sacrifice to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
to this your body, what do you do? Present it as a living sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, plural, the different part of your body, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hand, your leg, every part of your body. Offer it as a sacrifice to God. In other words, now you know that this your body this is not anything that you can do with this your hand anymore. You can't use this your hand and punch somebody in the face. You can't try it anymore. That's what he said. Offer it, present it to God as a living sacrifice. It be, this body now belongs to God. You can't use this your hand to slap somebody. You can't use this your leg to kick somebody. You can't use this your leg to go to certain places. There are certain places that this your leg will not carry you to. There are things you cannot look on with this your eyes. There are things you cannot hear anymore. Anything that doesn't take defy, you can't present this your ear to hear it. So when somebody is telling you something that does not take defy, you can't, you are not permitted to listen to it. You are not permitted to watch any kind of thing that you want to watch. There are places you are not permitted to go to. So this, that is the reason why he said, present your body a living sacrifice. Is that clear? Is that understood? So to this body, that is what you need to do. So if you tell me now, let us go to nightclub. I can't go with you to the nightclub. This leg has been offered to Christ. Is a living sacrifice. There are places I cannot, this leg cannot carry me to. And there are things, there are kind of music I cannot listen to with this my ears. So I can't go there. There are the kind of things I cannot see. That can, my eyes cannot behold iniquity. Remember what the Bible said? That God is of a purer, he cannot behold iniquity. So there are things I cannot look on to. There are things I can't. So I present this my body and offer. Give me Romans chapter 6. Verse 9, 10, 11. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more, death had no more dominion over him. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye yourself to be dead indeed unto him, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your what? Touch your mortal body. Let me see. It's your body. He said, let not sin reign. How? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey in the loss thereof. Verse 13. Neither yield your what? Members as what? Instrument of unrighteousness. Don't use it your hand and sign your signature that you know that what is written on the paper is fraud. You put your whatever, you know, you put your hand there. There are things you cannot, that's why he said, yield your members. He said, neither yield your members as instruments of what? Unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourself unto what? God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as what? Instruments of righteousness unto God. Only things that are righteous will I subject this my body to. My body now is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It is not for fornication. It is not for adultery. That's why it is holy. That's what he said you should do to this body. Okay? Is that clear? So we move to the next one. Now you come to the soul. Remember the soul is not saved. So, and the body is not yet saved. And you see what he said you should do to this body. And then look at what he said you should do to your soul. Go back to Romans chapter 12 verse. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Romans 12 2. He said, and be not conformed to what? Do not conform to what? To this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? How? 
that you may, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Say in verse 2. How do you renew your mind? Why did he say you should renew your mind? He's not saved here. Well, how did he, why did he say you should renew your mind? Why? Listen. Because the life, the mind is in the soul, is it not? That is a soulish life. That is that mind. This soul is what the Bible calls, uses the word flesh sometimes. Sometimes it uses the word soul. Sometimes it uses the word heart. But it's talking about soul. They use it inter interchangeably. But it's, they are different. So the soul life is the flesh aspect. When you talk about the flesh, I told you the flesh, the Bible uses the word flesh to mean two things. One is this mortal bodies. This physical body. And then another one is the flesh, which is your soul. Now, what he says to your soul, do not conform, do not continue to live the way you are, you, because you have a mindset. Hello? Hello? You have a mind what? Set. There are things you have learned. There are things you have witnessed. There are things you have experienced. There are so many experiences you have learned over time since you were born. The society have taught you that. Tradition have taught you that. Even religion have taught you that. Your peer, peer groups you have learned from it. The ones you learn from tradition, the one you learn from your parents, the one we learn, so many of them. They are, some of them are good, some of them are bad. They are all inside your soul. So what God says now is that you have to make sure that you continue to change your mind, renewing your mind. That is to say, you will start first of all to unlearn those things you have learned over time. You begin to replace them with what God says. For example... The Bible says, I mean, for example, to you or to some of us, it is more blessing to receive than to do what? True or false? From the normal, that's what we have learned. So that is why an average man does not like to give, doesn't give. He wants, he is like self. He, he wants to keep receiving and keep receiving and keep receiving. He doesn't like to give. So, but God says, it is more blessing to give than to do what? Or another one we have learned, you do me, I do you. God no good verse. True or false? So what did God say? When they do you, you forgive. Don't do them back. That is renewing your mind with the word of God. It is more blessing to give than to receive. So you are just and begin to give. He said, lay your treasures where? In heaven, where there is no teeth, where there is no moth to rot and to steal. He said, lay your treasure there. But where do we lay our treasures? Here on earth. Have you seen it now? So, a lot of us have learned this soul life. And that is what we live all through. 
being born again as a Christian. That is the reason why 10 years later, 20 years later, there is no change. There is no transition from the life of the soul to the life of the spirit. There is a life in the flesh or the life in the soul. Give me 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 2. He said that he no longer should live the rest of his time or the rest of his life or time in what? In the flesh, to the loss of men, but to the will of God. So you can live a life of the soul. And that is what a lot of people have been doing over time. It's about the comfort of the soul. Because the soul life wants comfort. It doesn't want anything to disrupt it. And so, even when we are going to God, and when we are praying to God, and when we are fasting to God, all that we are asking is to take care of the soul life. To deliver you, to help you, to heal you, to do all that. That's the soul life. And then, you, get to, you come to the physical body what to wear, what to eat, what to drink, what to drive. It's about this. So you find that, that there is no, there is no impact. There is no transition from either from the body to the soul and to finally to the, no transition to the spirit life. So what we have done is that we just live our life from the beginning to the end in the soul. And I'm going to show you what it means to live a life in the soul or to live a life in the flesh. And also what it means to live a life in the spirit. What does it mean to live a life in the flesh or live a life in the soul? A soulish life. If you do good to me, what do I do? I will retaliate or I will respond or I will react with the same good. So if you do me good, I will do you good. If you bless me, I will bless you. If I am kind, if you are kind to me, I become one kind to you. So to us, our friends are those of them that are nice to you. Those of them that are not nice or good to you, they will not be your friend. True or false? True or false? So this is what soulish life is. And when you provoke him, when you provoke him, when you say something bad, or when you anger him, or when you annoy him, what does he do? He will fight back. That is a soulish life, and that is where they stay. If you are not him, he's not going to forgive you. He's not going to let go. Ten years later, he will remember what you did to him. He stored somewhere in his soul. So this is the, and some of us, you know, some of us are quiet and calm and cool and calculated. These are the things you learned from the world. The things you learn from the world, they are both good, bad, and ugly. So a lot of people are living a life of the soul. That's why if you annoy them, what they are going to, what they are going to give you back, you will wonder, you know that it has nothing to do with the spirit life. And that is why the Bible says, we can live in the spirit because we are born again, but we are not living. We are not walking. You can live in the spirit without walking in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Is it? 25. If we live in the spirit, let us do what? So it is possible to live in the spirit, but 
you are not walking in the spirit. And I'm going to show you what it means to walk in the spirit and what it means to live in the spirit. We are living in the spirit because we are born again. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. You are a member of God's family. You have been born again. But that life of the spirit, that life of the spirit, you are not walking in it. You are not, you are not living it out. That's what it means by walking in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in that spirit. Because what we do as Christians is that the moment we get born again, we no longer do anything about our growth. We are not transiting into that spiritual life. We are not transiting into walking in the spirit. Producing the fruits of the spirit. That spirit life, it has fruit that it bears. But we are not producing them. The reason is because we are not transiting to that spirit life. We remain in the soulish life. We remain in the flesh. So, you are always on your toes. Anything somebody says and oh, you are very apprehensive, you are very, very sensitive. He says this one, you react, you. Is it that you stop talking to the person, you stop relating with the person? These are the soulish life. And then, this person will beg you and beg you and beg you. And, you, you know there are people there. Eh? You will plead and plead and plead and plead and plead for one week, for two weeks, for three weeks, for one month before they will calm down and start smiling to you again. And when they calm down and start smiling with you, that does not mean that they have forgotten. That thing is still stored somewhere in their memory. They have records. You did something yesterday, it will remind you about what you did yesterday. Now, they can't live their life. That is why, you see, we, they keep malice Unforgiveness is the order of the day. A lot of people are carrying in so many unforgiveness hearts that people have done to them. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse um, First Corinthians 13, 5. Give me that NIV. Love does not love is not rude, love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. You know, you know, somebody just abuses you now. Or somebody just says something that is not good. You know what you do? Fight man. It's a solution. And this is how we have lived our life all over. Little, little things. Just little things the person says, it gets at you. Just little things like this, you spark. Like a baka or a bean seed. You baka. You know what is oil bean seed? Why? Anger. Because of what he said. And it's not a one off thing. This has characterized life over. Yes. Is that solid? And they say, come to church. You see, we have seen church as a religious place, just, just petty, just a pious kind of. He just because he's God, there is one God. So let us just come there and stay under that whatever for a period, for a period of time, and then you walk away. You continue your life because you are well brought up, because you are trained. They trained you in the military. They trained you in, this, in, the, in the government or whatever. They train you this way. They train you with all your professional, whatever. These are, you can't with that live a life of the spirit. You can't translate it to the life of the You can't. You stay on that. Do you know how you know? It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It, it keeps no record of what? wrongs done to it. It doesn't have that record. They don't train you there. No one trains you this way. No other institution trains you this way. No other person trains you this way. Even your parents, they don't train you this way. 
so this is where we stay. This is the reason why Christian, we are not changing. Believers are not changing. We are just living a normal life, a soulish life, a life of the flesh that we have born, been brought up with. And that is what we are not. No transition. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded, that is to live a life of the soul, to live a life of the flesh, to live a life of the soul, to live a life of the mind, is what? He said, is death. But to be spiritually minded, that is to live a life in the spirit, the spirit of God. To live a life that is in the, of the spirit is what? It gives you life. It gives you peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is what? In an enmity with God. That is, if you are living a life of the soul, if you are living a life of the flesh, that is where we have stayed. That is the kind of life you are living. That is the state where you are. No transition. If you stay on that your soul, the soulish life is enmity with God. The reason is because, because the carnal mind is enmity with, against God, for it is not subject to what? To the law of God. What is the law of God? God says, when they slap you on this side, what do you do? You turn the other. He is not subject to it. He can't. How many of us are doing that? Are living this type of, it has become flesh and blood to us. And when they slap you this way, you turn this way and you walk away. So the thing has been very little thing, just very little provocation, very little what somebody will say and all of that. You spark, you withdraw, you will throw tantrum, you will disconnect from the system. So there's no change. So what makes us, what makes you a Christian? And the other one, not Christian. You know what the Bible says? It says you shall know them by what? By the fruits they produce. What kind of fruits? That's how you know who a believer in Christ is. It's by the fruit that that person produces. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, verse 8. So, they that are in the flesh, another word for flesh is what? Soul. Those of them that are of the soul cannot do what? You can't please God. Remember in your soul, Remember the tree that God said that Adam should not eat in the Garden of Eden. It's a tree of knowledge of what? Good and evil. So there are good and evil inside it. So you can be good, but that your goodness is filthy rag before God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man's goodness is filthy before God. So those things, those good behavior, good whatever you think you are and all of that is filthy. Is a soulish life. God is not well pleased with you. God is not happy. You are, as a matter of fact, an enemy of God. And this is the kind of life you see in the world. They have the good, the bad, and they, they do good. That's why Jesus said, if you do good to those who do good to you, so of what to use? If you greet those who greet you, of what to use is it? What is it that you are doing? You are doing nothing. Because that is the kind of, give it to me, Matthew chapter 5. Is it 520? He said, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe and the Pharisee, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Find it for me. 21. Of what good is it if you greet those who greet you? 
If you salute those who salute you, find it for me. That's not it. Salute those who salute you. Okay, Luke chapter 6, 33. Say, and if you do to them which do good to you, what is it that you have done? You have not done anything. And what, thank you. He said, for sinners also do what? They do the same. That's a soulish life. That's a soul where there is good and evil. They know how to, they can do good, they can do evil at the same time. God, that is where Christians, that is where we have leveled ourselves. That's where we stay. When you say this person is a nice person, is a good brother, is a good whatever, because everything is working out fine at the moment. Let the equation tilt and let us see what happens. It's hardly you see Christians who live a life of the Spirit. This is what makes you different from the rest of the people. Not that you come to church. Not that you are singing in song, singing song. Not that you are fasting. Not that you are praying. Because they fast. Do you know Satan? They pray. They pray to Satan. You know they fast and they pray. Hello? You know Satan, there is a, they call them. They know they are Satan. They know they, they are praying. They say they are not praying to God. They are praying to Satan. So you pray, they pray. You fast, they fast. You give, they give. And if you do good to them, which do good to you? What thank you have you for even sinners do the same? Yes. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again? So there is nothing that you are doing good. That you are, you are, there are those, there are people who are not born again. They don't, they are not born anything. You do not, they don't sleep around. There are still many of them, they are still virgins. They are still men who are not born again, they are still virgins. There are women who are not born again, they are still virgins. So what is it that you are doing that is different? Living a life of the spirit is what we are not teaching the church. If you hear that there is a program now, they organize a program, the presence of God is, and all of that is to use it to draw, to treat, or to solve the problem that is in the soul or the problem that is in the body. Everything is about the body, is about the soul. You draw from God to take, there is a pain, sickness in your body, you draw from God to heal your body. There is a problem that you got into and all of that, one whatever, and they're after you and they want to arrest you and the police, you are praying to God for deliverance. Everything is, you draw from God to deal with the issue of the soul. You draw from God to deal with the issue of the, you are not doing it, you are not growing. You are not growing nothing, absolutely nothing. You are not spiritual at all. Jesus said, by their fruits. That's what we do every day. Year in, year out. Hello. 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 The moment, the day, the very day, the very day you make up your mind you want to live a life of this way, nobody in this planet Earth will tell you. You will know. It's a circumcision. You see this your hand? You are going to cut it off. It will pay. You don't experience that pain. You don't experience that hurt. 
That is why the Bible said that Jesus Christ, he learned to be them through suffering. It will pain you. You will cry. You know what it means that somebody threatened your life and almost killed you. You almost use charm or juju or whatever diabolically to kill you. And finally you, and then you forgive that person and open your hand and welcome that person. For you to do that. Eh? That is what is called the life of the spirit. Do we do it? We just wait. Let somebody just offend you. The moment to offend you, you stop talking to the person. You distance yourself from the person. You start fighting back. You start gossiping and saying all kinds of things. And all. where is it? And guess what? It is not that the person made a mistake. But come back in a year's time. It is still the same life he's living. It's the same character. It's the same disposition. It's the same thing that he's saying. No change. No impact of the spirit. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, I think. Now look at the life of the Spirit. When, the, when Paul said in that Galatians 5, 25, he said, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Look at the walk. Look at how you walk in the Spirit. Look at what it means to walk in the Spirit. Blessed are the poor in the Spirit, for theirs is a kingdom of what does it mean to be born in the spirit? Humble. Teachable. Men of lowly hearts. Jesus said, All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. He said, Learn of me. Because I am meek and I am lowly. That's it. Paul, they speak lowly. Being lowly in it. You don't fight. You don't fight for your rights. They hurt you. They say this. They did this. Little, little things like this. You just say little things. Just one little thing. You get offended. It is not once. What I'm saying is that it is not once. It is not two times. It's not three. It's your lifestyle. Blessed are the poor in the sea for theirs in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be what? What does it mean to mourn? Is it to mourn for your father that died? Or to mourn for your loved ones that are dead. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about when you have offended God, when you have done something bad. You remember David. When David took Bathsheba, that is Uriah's wife, he was sleeping with her until the prophet Nathan now came and told him a parable how that one man had plenty of fish, I mean sheep in the house. And this other poor man had only one sheep. And then he had a visitor. The rich man went and collected the only one sheep that this poor man had and used it to attend his, to his uh, visitor. And then David was angry. He said that the man that did this in desire to die. And Prophet Nathan now told him, say you are the one. What did David do? What did he do? He fell on his face. He mourned for his sin. Do we have people who, because if we have people that mourn, if you actually, do you know what it means to mourn for your sin? It's not a good place to be. Hello? Hello? Mourning for sin is not a good place to be. If you know what it means to mourn. You will not want to go there. 
So what you are going to do is that you are going to try as much as possible not to get into that place. It's something that happens once again. So when you sin against God, you cry. You mourn for lying. For being bitter against someone. For being unforgiving towards somebody. You mourn. It's a sin against God. These are the things. They are gone. These are, these are the B attitudes. Otherwise, we call it the B, B attitude. That is the B attitude. That's how your attitude should be like. That's how our attitude should be like. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. Because if you are not doing this, then it means that you are an enemy of God. It's an enmity with God because they are not subject to the law. They can't obey God's law. They just live a soulish life. Once it is convenient and comfortable with them, they like it, they take it. They get offense at very, very quick. It doesn't take them anything to get offense and get offended. What baffles me, the question you're going to be asking, husband and wife, they, they once loved themselves so much. Two of us, they were in love and all of that. What happened that they got to a point where there is divorce now? But they were once love beds. They were once falling on each other. They were once the apple of each other. The sugar in their tea, the bread and the butter in their coconut and coconut. So what happened now that there is divorce? On each other's neck. You know what it means? That is the kind of life they have been living from day one. Day ten. No spirit life at all. Blessed are they that mourn for they, for they shall be comforted. Verse 5. Blessed are the what? The meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Who is the meek? He doesn't fight for his rights. Although he's old, that is his right. But he won't fight for it. You want to go one mile with him, he's ready to go two miles or ten miles with you. You take his clothes, he will give you the second one if you want. He's a meek person. He's quiet. Anything that you do to him, he carries it and commits it to God. He, he doesn't take laws into his hands. He allows God to do his bidding. Blessed are they which do hunger and taste after what? How many times? Let us even say it is fasting and prayer now. How many check all the prayers and all the fastings? The content is a fasting to break through, is a prayer and fasting to knock off satanic strongholds, is a prayer and fasting. I've told you, this is not being spiritual. You are still living in the soul. Unbelievers, they do the same thing. They go to Babalawa when they have problems to go and draw to take care of. The same thing, that's what we are doing. The only thing is that you are going to God to collect it. And God is magni magnanimous. God is so gracious. The Bible says that even your heavenly father, he gives rain and song to who? To the righteous and to the wicked. To the righteous and to the unrighteous. So they go to this, they still receive God's blessings. So you go to him, you will see, receive it. You receive your break, you receive your healing, and all of that. That doesn't make you anything spiritual at all. And as a matter of fact, you can be deceived by that. The guys in the Matthew 7 and all of that, they cast out devil, they raise the dead, they, they raise the dead, they heal the sick, they did all that. At the end of the day, Jesus said, Depart from me, because you never know anything about the life of the Spirit. You don't walk in the spirit. You live in the spirit, but you don't walk in the spirit. So you are an enemy of God if you don't walk in the spirit. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain 
What does it mean to be merciful? You know what it means to be merciful? You don't deserve what you are asking for. Hmm? It means merciful, before you show mercy to somebody, it means that that person doesn't deserve it. You are not deserving at all in any way, in any shame and form. How many of us are ready? This is what it means to live and walk in the spirit. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How many of us are, are obsessed with this? I want to see God. And because I want to see God, you see this in my heart? I will make sure there is no offense. It does not offend anybody and neither does it harbor any offense inside. No evil or unclean thoughts or whatever it is towards anybody or anything at all. This your heart must constantly always be clean. Not on the basis of somebody's standard. It's on the basis of God's standard. Before God, you have a good conscience towards God. And you have a good conscience towards man. If you must see God. That is why I say, if you live a life of the Spirit, it will cost you something. You don't need anybody to tell. When people see you, they will know. There's something about, something that will happen to you. There is, that is what he means by an encounter. That is an encounter that lasts. Not that the encounter you come and fall on the ground and then you wake up back to square one. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking, this is the kind of encounter that God wants us to have. They wonder, that's what he means by transformed life. That is what he means by life that he changed. Not changing your life because you just got a breakthrough that will transform your life. For, transform your life for what? That's what you call transformation. Is that what, that's what we call transformation. Something that will change your life forever. You just had a breakthrough and all of that and then the money will be coming. The thing will be flowing all through. Generational blessing and all that. It changed your life. It does, doesn't change person's life. Transformation comes as we behold it with an open face as in a mirror. That's where transformation comes. Blessed are the peacemaker. Uh-huh. For they shall be called. You know what it means to be a peacemaker? Broker peace at any point in time. You just want to make, you don't want any schism. You don't want any quarrel. You don't want any of those whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, yeah. You, you know what he called peace? You know what we call peace? You know what we call peace? Somebody just offended you. Somebody has been on your neck. Somebody has been a thorn in your flesh and all of that. Uh, Pastor, I've heard it from so many of them, from so many of us. Hey, Pastor, I don't have anything around with, uh, with this person. No. I'm forgiving him and all. It's just that I don't just want to have anything to do with him again. Hey, you are still living a life of the soul. That's a soulish life. That's a life in the flesh. God doesn't deal with us like that, does he? Does God deal with us like that? You have done and done and done so many things to God and God said, you know what? I will just forgive you. But I will have to do. How many of you will like it? But that is what you want to be doing with people. That is the world. That is the soulish life. That's the kind of life the world lives. The life, the soul, that has no good and evil. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are what? Persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Because you stand for what is right. And you know you are going to be persecuted. You are going to be sacked. You are going to be punished. They are going to turn against you. They are going to gang up against you. And you know that. And you accept you shift ground. How 
How many of us agree? That's what we call spirit life. We have people that come to church. You see them in their hundreds and in their thousands. There are many people they don't talk to. There are many people they don't answer. There are many people they don't relate with. There are many people they are not talking to. They are Christian. They are born again. There are people play. Oh my God. And it's not just that it happened once or twice or three times. Is a regular occurrence in their lives. Yeah, some of us, when your husband offends you, when your wife offends you, come and see drama. Come and see drama. Offense, 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 offense. Is 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 always like that. Five years after marriage is always you come, you still see that same thing going on. Ten years later, you come. They will offend each other. When this one offends this one, he's another wala. It has always been like that. We are not changing. We are not transforming. We are not becoming more like Christ. Blessed are they which, when they are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are you when men do what? Can you give me um, NIV? Blessed are ye when men shall do what? How can somebody that is insulted be blessed? Blessed are you when people insult you. When people do what? Persecute you. When people falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. What do you do when they abuse you, when they insult you? Is it because I am a Christian? Is it not because I am a Christian? Is it not because of, of this church? Is it not because that's why you have the audacity to open your mouth and be talking to me like that? Because you don't know. That's, that's how they talk. Soulish life. Life of the flesh. Enmity with God. Is it because is it not because that I brought myself so low? If it were in my office, can you talk? Will you even enter my office? Will you even have the God to knock at my door? Is it because you see me here? That's how they talk. Canal. Canal mind. Enmity with God. I've told people, I say, see, that's why God, Paul said, when I come to you, I don't want to know anything about whether you are the president or assistant president or whether you are commissioner or assistant. All those things, they say it doesn't make any impression. What matters to me is Jesus Christ. You are living the life of Christ. He said, I lay behind everything. I keep pressing for the man. You see what he has lost. See what he gave up. See what he gave up. Many of us are doing, we, you see, eh? you know, Paul, before you can, in our time, before you can get somebody that is as intelligent as that, even in this, this you can't you can, you can hardly find one. That guy knew the word, knew the, he said he knew the letter. The thing is, he was, he was, he studied. He read. He was a genius. He was answering before King Agrippa. He was talking. The king, the king shouted, Paul! It's too much. Too much knowledge has made you mad. He shouted at him. <laughs> he lost his uh, That's how that guy. There yeah, are men. But Paul said, all of these, I throw them aside. He said, you know what he called them? You know what he's called them? You know what he called all those things? He said, they are, do you know what he's done? Do you know what he's done? He's not, cat, he's not cattle poopoo. 
Because you can see cattle poop, you can see, look at it, you can see use leg and If it's human poop, can you do that? That's what he calls it. But tongues. That's what we pride. That's where Christians, we come and be pride. You pride. You red. You are. And then you maintain your class and all of it. You don't want to get it. You are rotting. You are smelling before God. And you don't know. You rot and you smell before God. And we don't know. That is why when you look at these men of the old, look at how they die. Look at how they die. Look at their death. You won't hear that no, any one of them we are sick and they were carrying him from one hospital to another hospital and all that. No, you can't hear one. Look at what Paul said. He said, my Lord has revealed to me my disease. My time is up. He has shown me my death. He, he tells me. So he said, he, he started gambling. He said, I don't know whether to live or to die. I don't know which one to do. Look at what a human being was saying. Is it not the same man and who, the same human being with us? Look at Peter. He said, the Lord has shown him. How do we die today? Accident. Cancer. Diabetes. All sorts. Stroke. Name them. It's ravaging. Sin. And we don't want to call it by his name. We don't want to. We just want to give it um, a, um, uh, a baptismal name. Instead of calling it sin or iniquity, call it corruption. Because you can deal, you can relate with it. It's corruption. There is corruption in the system. But when you say there is sin, there is iniquity. When you tell somebody you are an evil man, you will fight it. But if you say he's a corrupt man, Is a, is polished. You don't want to use uh, because uh, you, you see what they call is no longer the Bible calls them harlots. What do we call them now? He said, "Don't use the word harlot. You just use come uh, sex workers, sex, not prostitutes. The Bible calls them prostitutes and harlots." But what do we call them? Sex work, sex workers. It's what we can do. You see the generation that we are in. It's messy. That's why sometimes I wonder what kind of life are we living as Christians? No different. You can't see a difference between a Christian and non-Christian. They step on your toe like this. The generation unborn, yet unborn, will hear it. Because you are going to store it in a bank. Somebody will know that. If we have records upon records. Some of us here. That's why, is it not last Sunday or last season? I say, get up, see, look for somebody that you are no longer greeting me. And there are many of them in the church. I know them. Some of them, I know them. Don't think that I don't know. I know. What you are waiting for me is to do embarrass you by calling your name and then that day you will stop coming to church. Any little thing. Some are just, you know, you know, gunpowder. You just, they are just waiting for somebody if you just touch it. So everybody is scared. They are scared of, of that person. They are, is, 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 it, is it written? Hey, hey, my hand is not there. Oh, you're on your own, no. Because he's like a scorpion. But he's a Christian. And he's born again. Soulish life. No change. We shall know them by their fruits. Even when they speak evil about you, even when they annoy you, what comes out of your mouth? Your face changes. Some of them, when you see them, you see that there is another being that are taking over because of the kind of rage. I've told you before, and I want to say it again. When somebody offends you, 
The one that is offended is the one that should apologize. <laughs> eh? That is the walking in the spirit. When somebody offends you, who's up? When I offend you, you are offended. You are the one that will come. Because if you are looking, if you are waiting for the one that is offended hmm, to come, it's not going to work. It's the one, the person that is right. Ah, Pastor, how can you say that? It's unfair. And God is unfair. You think, you, you, know, you know, that's why I tell people, you cannot walk with God. You cannot live a spiritual life. You can't walk in the spirit. You can't live and walk in the spirit on your own. You, you don't have it. You don't have what it takes. If you like, stay in the monastery. If you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, enabling you to do that. You can't live the life of God. You can't live by God's word on your own ability. You can't. You can't keep God's commandment. They tried it in the old covenant. They failed. And that is the reason why if you don't learn if you don't make a diligent effort, if you don't learn to walk with the Holy Spirit, if you don't know what it means to have a walk with the Holy Spirit, if you don't know it, you can't live a life of the Spirit. You can't please God. What you're going to be doing is that you're going to be living a life of the soul. The life in the flesh. Using your own strength. And that is why you get angry, you get whatever. When you have finally recovered, you know, Come back again. But if the Spirit of God is one that is driving you, that's why the Bible says, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit. These are the ones that are God's children. It's the Holy Spirit that is leading you. He's the one that is at work in you to will to do. You must learn. It's not by chance. It's not you must learn because this is what spirituality is all about. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11, chapter 13 verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and I don't have this life, I don't walk in the spirit, the life of love, I don't have it. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Another word he says is the empty vessel that makes the most sound. You are empty. Nobody will, you can't intimidate anybody with your tongues. Go and sit down. You are not the one. You can't speak tongues better than sit down. Verse 2. It was the cherub that covered it. He used to be appear in the presence of. He was the one that is in charge of worship. He fell. And though I have the gift of what prophecy and understand all what mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all the faith so that I can remove mountains, and I'm not walking in the spirit. I'm not living in the spirit. I am the empty vessel that makes the most sound. You can have all this in you are empty. You can have all this in you, you are still empty. Walking in love is living in the spirit. Is walking in the spirit. Walking in love is walking in the spirit. To live a love life, you don't pluck it from the tree. You don't get it from the shelf. Jesus said, if you love me, do what I tell you to do. What did he tell you? 
when they slap you, you turn this around. What did he tell you? When they persecute you, pray for them and bless them. When they insult you, take it in good faith. See it as part of training. And God is giving to you. He's being, you are being trained. See it as part of walking a life or living a life of it. Because that is what makes you, the, that's what differentiates you from any other person. If they annoy you, get angry. And then they annoy them and they get angry. So what is the difference? You have not done it, there is no difference. The Bible tells us in the book of that Matthew 7, 20, it says, it's by their fruits we shall know who they are. If you love me, keep my command. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And though I bestow all my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I have no charity. <clears throat> you can be doing NGO, doing NGO from north to south and east to west, and doing everything, and then you see the whatever. And then it's possible you do all these things and you don't have one love. So you are not walking in the spirit. Is activity, all these things are activities. That's why Jesus said, if you are coming to the altar to give a gift, and you find out that somebody is not happy with what you did, drop it at that altar. Go and reconcile with the person first before you come and give it. How many of us are ready? How many of us are ready? It doesn't matter. It's a soulish life. It's a life of the flesh. You know, you know, for you to do that, it was one day, these people that live behind us there, one of them became, there was something that happened about a dustbin and all of that. They are messing the whole place. We are the one that cleaned it. When we first came here, if you see the dustbin on that road, this road, you have to climb up and come down. They don't pack dustbin. It smells and stinks. And they were walk, driving over it and going to the house. When we came, I called the Malam people and all of that, paid them. Then it was about 3,000 or so. They packed and packed and packed and packed and cleared it. Finally, we got that place ready and put that to whatever, did everything. Pay for the dustbin, they will not pay. Where they won't pay. And they will just come and dump the whole thing there. The thing will be smelled. I started complaining. This other one man from there, if you see the quarter, that there's nothing he didn't say. He sparked me, I sparked. So after that day, he entered, he was, he was fuming and going back to his, me, I was fuming and going back to the church. The following day, I saw him. He was driving. He was going for a school run. He was driving his children back home. Immediately, he was at that gate. Immediately, he saw me. He was somebody that was driving this way. I was standing here. He was driving this way. Immediately, he saw me. He put his face like this. I was scared he was going to drive into the ditch. I said, stop, 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 stop. He turned, he said, I said, is it because of yesterday we quarrel like that? I say, yeah, it's okay now. It's okay. We have we have um, we have talked. Ended the case ends. Let's move on. Is a whatever. Is we misunderstand ourselves. You have your opinion, I have mine and all. We settled it, we finish. Let's move on. All these things are not necessary. He said, okay. He continued. The next, day I, the next time I saw him again, I lifted my hand. I was doing like this. Because I have to. Finally, he mellowed down and started smiling. 
few weeks later, he came and said he wanted to do business with us. I said, uh -huh, you have started again. So, but at least I reached out. They offended us. I was one that went for him. Unbeliever don't do that. They don't. Normal Christian, they don't. Good people, they don't. People who are raised well in their father's house, they don't do it. You get angry, you get angry, he keeps it. You mind your business and mind my business. Follow peace with, with how many men? And what? And without which? But because I want to see God, I will do it. You see, this is my pride. I will swallow it. I was thinking that I will, sometimes I will go and look at my weight. Why I'm asking, I say, because this thing, when I finish doing, let me see whether I will reduce in the weight or whether my height will reduce. It has not reduced. He has not made me any. As a matter of fact, he makes you stronger, a better person. And then God will be able to use you. And God will be happy with you. And you will live a good life. And you will live a long life. And you will live a healthy life. And you will live a successful life. God can bless you. God can protect you. God can fight for you. That's why I tell you, anybody that rises up again, I don't care who you are. Anybody, if you like, be the all the, the federal government and the world government, United Nations and all of that. I don't, I don't know anybody. I don't have anything. But here, I know that one with God is equal to majority. If God can be with you, who is it that can be? There is none. The Bible says, if you are a follower of that which is good, who can harm you? Give it to me first, please. 1 Peter 2. Is this 2 Peter 2.15? If you're a follower of that, which is good? Follower of that, which is good. 1 Peter 3.13, yeah. And who is he that will do what? Who is the person? Is a question. He say, who is a person? And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that, which is what? You follow. It's not that you do good today, tomorrow you don't follow again. You continue. That's your lifestyle. That's your pattern. Nobody, nobody can harm you. Nobody can touch you. You become untouchable. It's not just untouchable saying it and confessing it with your mouth. No, it doesn't work like that. It is not confession. You confess and confess. And meanwhile, you are. That's why I tell people about prayer. You pray and pray and pray. I don't pray as much as you do. You see, you know why I talk about that? Because you do all the praying and do all the fasting. Yet, you are keeping malice with someone. Yet, you are duping somebody. Yet, you are being unfair to someone. And what is the purpose of the praying? Prayer doesn't produce faith. So I hope you know that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith doesn't come by prayer. You can't have faith because you pray. Faith comes through the word of God. And word of God is that you obey God's word. You hear the word of God, you obey it. That's what faith. Jesus said, I will tell you who a wise man is. In book Luke chapter 6, 48, he said, I will tell you who a wise man is. the one that heareth my, is the one that cometh to me and heareth my word and doeth it. That's what is called faith. The doers of the word of God, not just the hearers. That's what produces faith. So that when you have it, then you go in the, in the, to the place of prayer. Your prayer will catch fire. Real fire, not this, uh, not this. There is a fake fire. There are fake fire, there is real fire. When you have faith and then you pray, your tongues become tongues of fire. Your prayer becomes fervent. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous. It availeth much. 
So someone can spend five hours and ten hours praying. Another person spend like two, three minutes and pray. His prayer of two, three minutes is most effective, powerful than the person that spent the whole day fasting and praying. Because you are fasting and praying, you don't keep obeying the laws. You are keeping malice with somebody. Somebody called against you. You are shouting. You are abused. You did all that. You come back and say you are praying. You are stealing from somebody. You are doing all kinds of whatever. You don't. If you are a follower of that which is good, tell me who can harm you. Is it Satan? No way. Is it the governor? I don't care who you are. We have respect for our leaders, for our president, for our governors, for our leaders. Everyone will give honor to whom honor is due. But not when somebody does or says something that is contrary to God's word. I will tell them like John and Peter said. He said, concerning this matter, we would rather obey God than to obey you. We are not going to obey you one bit. I'm going to stand on the word of anything you want to do. Arrest me, arrest me, imprison me. Like he did to Paul and uh, uh, Silas. The angel came in the night and removed them. He will do it for me. If you stand for what is right. If you stand for what is good. Let's rise up to our feet as Christians. Not just that you are born again and you just come to church. Even, I just don't get it. What we are doing in the body of Christ is just, where is the maturity? Remember Jesus Christ is coming to take a church without spot and wrinkle, without blemish. Amen. I say amen. amen. I say amen. Amen. Please bring that table here. Bring this one. Hmm. So when we bless the bread and the wine, you just come fast and then take your Father, we thank you as we come to the communion table. We remember the day Jesus Christ took the bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave and said, take it. This is my body that is broken. And he blessed the cup again and said, this is the blood of the new covenant. As often as we eat and drink, we remember the Lord's death till he comes. Father, we bless this bread and we bless this cup and everything that is here for us on the table. We ask that your hand will come upon it and the blessings of heaven rest upon it. By this, we remember the covenant that we have with you, Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that as we eat and drink, we receive strength. We receive the refreshing that comes from your presence, Lord. Quicken every heart, quicken every body, quicken everyone that is here, Lord, today. Give us that grace, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to live our life for you. The grace to live and walk in the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, by this also we remember the covenant and we ask that everything that Jesus Christ died for. Father, I pray that as we request, make our request, O God, 
every one of us will be answered. The prayers will be answered. Interventions will come. Open doors and breakthroughs. Whatever need it is in the life of the people. Lord, we ask that they be released upon their lives in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.